So as saxophone players, we're always trying to improve our sound and we're looking for inspiration, people to inspire us, artists to listen to. And nearly all of us look at saxophone players. But is that the best thing to do? I had a really interesting conversation this week with Simon Williscroft. Now Simon is a, one of the top UK pop saxophone players. He's touring with Duran Duran and Tony Hadley and recording with people like Seal and Paloma Faith and Michael Bublé and all these amazing artists. We're having a good chat about how to get a sound, how do you create your sound. We're recording this for a guest session, which is one of the special things we have inside Sax School for members where we talk to famous artists like Simon and get their uh, feedback on things like sound and technique and approach to practicing. Anyway, Simon had some really interesting ideas about how to get inspiration. Let me show you what I mean. So I was asking Simon about whether he looked at just one saxophone player for inspiration when he was getting started or whether he looked at lots of different people. This is what he said. Absolutely, yeah, because you, you, you don't want to be just drawing on one influence. And, and, and for me, um, I just thought, well, it, it's, I've just got to listen to loads of saxophone players. So I, so I did. Um, yeah. then, I, then I realized, actually, no, you can just, once I'd started developing this kind of sound I, I, I wanted, I'd, I'd moved on to other instruments because because then you once you've got your kind of saxophone sound down or it's get at least getting there, then you then you then you're thinking about other things that you hadn't thought about before like phrasing and, and um, feel and things like that and you can draw just as much from a piano player that you really like and the way he plays or she plays and or or, or a, a flautist. Actually, in this interview, Simon told me a really funny story about his very first gig with Duran Duran where he had to fly out to Warsaw and the gig was in front of 120,000 people and it was live telecast as well and he didn't have a rehearsal, he had a sound check and that was it. Pretty cool story. So yeah, I, I actually I moved on then from other instruments to listening to singers. I stopped listening to instrumental music for a long time and just listened to um, singers and try to, particularly someone like Stevie Wonder, because his phrasing is second is second to none really. And I, and I, I've de developed my phrasing on singers like him. That's really interesting. So were you listening to a Stevie Wonder uh, recording and then trying to emulate that on your saxophone, the way that he would sing a line? Yeah, but probably not as a as officially as that. I wouldn't be sort of like, right today. I'm going to listen to Stevie Wonder and then stop that and then play. I, because I'd I'd be listening to it so much, not just his singing, but his harmonica playing, and I'd, I'd listen to p people like him and Michael McDonald and Sting and um, uh, Shaka Khan and just just people that I just had, had it's a real a real soul, and I felt I could get something into my playing from that. Man, I thought that was such an interesting tip from somebody like Simon, and I think that's something that all of us can take away when we're thinking about practicing, we're exploring um, inspiration for our own sound. It's not just saxophone players. Sometimes looking at a vocalist or looking at a different instrumentalist like a piano player or a guitar player can really add an extra dimension to your sound, to your overall concept of uh, what your sound should be like. So if you're into pop playing like Simon is, then go check out Stevie Wonder. Start listening to Michael McDonald and you know, get some inspiration from those guys and try and copy some of those lines onto your saxophone. So if you want to check out the rest of that interview with Simon too, the rest of that guest session, uh, which is amazing by the way, there's so much great information in there. Uh, you know, I think if you aspire to do the sort of playing that someone like Simon is doing, where he's out touring around the world, playing with these really high profile artists, then it's great to hear from people like Simon. He shares loads of great tips about getting a great tone, about approaching your practicing, approaching the concept of how you play that. That's, I think, is really, really important. So you can check out that full guest session inside Sax School as part of your Sax School membership, along with hundreds of other lessons, all of our mini courses and our amazing student pathways, which will guide you step by step through the process of learning, whether you're a brand new beginner or whether you're an intermediate or an advanced player and you're looking to round out your skills with improvising or high notes altissimo or theory, all those sorts of things. So that's over at saxschoolmcgillmusic.com. Come and check it out and become a part of our huge community of uh, students all around the world that use sax school every day to improve. Anyway, keep practicing up. I'll catch you next time.